everybody in this rap world, all they talking about is money. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying I'm the richest nigga in the game because Fresh Prince, all these, a lot of niggas with money. But I'm saying it's like, it's not the money that I'm bragging about. When people see me with the Jews, it's not that. It's for these, yes, so it's for these yeah. little niggas to see. You just see me in cuffs, shot up in a wheelchair with my head wrapped up. And you see me less than a fucking year later bailing through this motherfucking Jew down like Saka Zulu. Banging on niggas. I got this whole shit shook up. Everybody talking about this West Side shit, right? People like West, uh, Ice Cube started. I was in jail when Ice Cube was out. No, that wasn't no problem. The day I got out of jail, it was a motherfucking problem to be where the fuck you was from. The day I stepped out, that's power. I want these little niggas to see that. I didn't get that power from guns because there's no guns in jail. I got that power from books and from thinking and by strategy. Power from books and from thinking and by strategizing. That's what I want little niggas to see. And that, strat just for a year, niggas think, you know, you've been in the game so long, but it took all that shit didn't matter because the rape, all, it, it veto all that. As soon as they charge you with rape, even if you ain't do it, it veto your career. I started from scratch with Death Row, a new company, not in, I was independent when I was Tupac. Me Against the World, I just bought my old managers out. I had it all now. I re-signed to, to be a part of this. For my own, for this to make my own shit bigger. And now I got Machiavelli Records. And Machiavelli is the first artist on that. And then One Nation is the second artist on that. And then um, and I, I'm signing um, Greg Nice and Smooth to either me or Quest. I got another group at Quest, Ghetto Stars, that's like an offshoot of the Outlaws, you know what I mean? I got New Jersey as part of the West Side now, you know what I mean? Just like, just like war, we put our flag in Jersey, we ain't taking over Jersey, it's still East Coast, but it's just the West Side, there's, there's now a West Side to New Jersey, because West Side is not part of the map, I'm not no dumbass motherfucking, I don't bang for the color or the, or the, or the land, I bang for the principles and for the honor. I'm banging for the West Side. This is in my heart. This this, this is how I feel, not West Side, California. Right, this is right, where I'm right. from. It's, it's, it's basic like that, but it's really deep, like West Side. You know what I mean? When I be throwing at the W, it ain't for California. I love California, but the W is for just the East Side, it's the West Side, it's the Middle uh, middle America, and we divide it. And that's when we throw this up. We at war right now. W for war. You understand? And when we all get together, when the East Coast and the West Coast and the Middle America get together, we got power. Right, right. And that's when I won't throw it up no more. When we all together. They only see me doing like this. And that's when we closer to arm again. But we ain't there. We still all separate in tribes, so I know what tribe I'm in. I'm in the west side, there's no way, I'm a soldier, I always be true to those being true, being true to me. And New York shouldn't be tripping, they should be loving this, because they the ones that gave me the game to do this, in addition to this, because there's west coast rappers too that don't do that. Right. What made me raw is that I'm west, I got both. I'm the future of, a, of black America. When we, when, we, when we manifest the best of the west side and the best of the east side, and we bring that together, you know what I mean, when east coast G's have sex with west coast G's, G these G's being women, and they have kids, that's gonna be the, the, the new breed. You know what I mean? When you start reading this culture with this gangbang shit. Right. That's the new breed. Like you know get them. Right, right. To get out. But right now, we stuck. And the only thing we can do is start looking. I never trust the TV to get my point across. And I feel like, yo, I feel like we need our confidence self-esteem and that's what I got in that my confidence in my self-esteem people might be like this nigga conceited or whatever but I fuck it I feel like I shine and I don't give a fuck how much white people the media niggas black people play haters police whoever try to darken my shine I'm gonna always shine through they can lie by my words they always gonna ring true right, right. you know what I mean because it's my essence it's in my essence and that's what's gonna always come through now, I feel like that's true about me. Like, now people be like, he's blasphemy. He's saying black people, that's blasphemy. Or he's acting like he's elitist. He's like the Muslims. Or he's like a 5% of it. It's nothing like that. It's only to get out. I feel like the, the, our future is our confidence and self-esteem. All this rape and gangbanging and killing and 30 niggas fucking one girl. They all come from a low self-esteem and no confidence. As soon as we get our confidence, because I don't think like that. I don't think, let me fuck 30 bitches. I don't our future is our confidence and self-esteem. All this rape and gangbanging and killing and 30 niggas fucking one girl that all come from a low self-esteem and no confidence as soon as we get our cup because i don't think like that i don't think let me fuck 30 bitches 
I don't even think like I want to be in a room when other niggas is fucking the bitch now. I don't think like that no more. And not because of jail. But because of my confidence is there, my self-esteem, my self-respect, you know, I don't need that. Uh -huh. But in the ghetto, that's the type of shit that we're taught. It's like in the army, you taught to kill, so you kill. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. We taught that. My older niggas, we taught that. That the only thing we grew up for is our sexuality. Now I use that to make money, but I enforce my strength, my mind strength. That's what's more important to me now. The niggas see that there's not no accident. I plotted every single step from this to this. Right. You know what I mean? Everything is quiet. It's hell that you that the next shit is called Illuminati because that's that's really what the hell that you that the next shit is called Illuminati because that's that's really what the Illuminati is on. That's why I put the K to it. Cause right. I want the niggas is telling me about this Illuminati shit while I'm in jail, right? Like the dollars, you know? right, 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 right. That's another way to keep yourself the same low. That's, that's another shit. way to keep you unconfident. Right. And I'm putting the K because I'm killing that Illuminati shit. Uh -huh. Trust me. If these motherfuckers wanted to kill you, why the fuck they gonna tell Farrakhan? Why they gonna tell the nation of Islam? Why they gonna tell this nigga in jail about the plan? How did he know? Right, 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 right. How did it leak to him? Who told him? <laughs> Who told him? The Pope? Who? Cause they like the Pope and the money. Oh, uh, come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. That's, I think that's bullshit. I'm gonna have more money. More money. More, more money. More, what about more weed. Okay. More rhymes. More platinum hits. And what about over there? His Tupac wasn't born, he was sent to us. I mean, he got the greatest mother in the world, but he was actually sent to her, and she was good enough to let him come to us. And he gave himself to the world. Given name is Tupac Shakur, I'm from the Bronx, and then I went to high school in Baltimore, and then moved to Oakland. It's from there, but I don't know if it Fanny Shakur, Kyle and the Two Shakur, Godfather Geronimo Pratt, Auntie Asada Shakur, you know, I come from a long line of straight soldiers. I was the roadie. I was the roadie. For shock, and I'm carrying the equipment, holding my faith, you know what I'm saying? That's what I had to do. I'm a hustler, so I um, did that, and on my spare time, when we go on tour, I pick up all the shit I had to pick up, drop it down, you know what I'm saying, and brush down the piano, and Shock would be playing the piano, and like Sir T for a cane to be rapping at the piano, and that's when I would let people hear me. I'd always be ready with a rhyme, and i kick a rhyme, Boney, and everybody started listening to me, and that's how I started getting friends in the industry. Then I knew people, you know what I'm saying, and I gave them confidence, I would, you know, get more risky, you know, write shit. And then Shock was like, you want to do the same song? And I was like, hell oh, yeah. So I had like 15 minutes to write my part. I just scribbled the shit out, did it. The people really liked it, and he felt good. And he was like, I want you to be the rebel of the underground. You know, I want you to keep me underground, keep me street. Because I would have never thought to do nothing like that. When I say thugs, I mean like, niggas who don't have anything. That, you know, they, they, got, they dress like the killers of the thugs, because we all come from the same thing. But they don't have nothing, but they got that talent, they got that spark, they got that certain something, whatever it is, that can get them out. Those, those are thumbs, man. That's the redefinition of it. And it was really... I never thought I was necessarily the best rapper, the best nothing. I think I'm the, the realest nigga out there. Uh -huh. I do think that. I think I own that. If I could patent being real, I think I own that. Because I think being real is just being true. Right, when I was right. in jail, bad boy, Puffy was the crown fucking Don. Even though Suge, as big as he was, and Snoop, right, right. at that point, they, they just with two million sales, it, they, they took the whole shit. Yeah. Because Suge had... Snoop to worry about with the trial. He couldn't right, right. be out there. That's what you're supposed to do. Right, 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 right. Into Tupac, a young captain. I uh -huh. want to join the family, dog. Get me out. I want to join the family. Got me out. I'm out. I'm in the family. Pac only attacked the people who wasn't right with the community. That's how he really felt. If it was a rapper who was fake and they were only doing it for the money, Pac attacked him. If it was a rapper that messed with guys and go both ways, Pac didn't feel that was good. He was, because Pac felt he was real serious about the music. Mm -hmm. So if you're a producer or you rap, and regardless if you're married or not, and you, and you got a boyfriend that works for you, a real boyfriend who used to be a dancer, Pac would have studied all the facts. Pac was real smart. So before he say something, he'll go and do his homework. 
he said, okay, this guy right here, they say he gay, he go both ways. I'm not going to put it out there on him yet. But I'm going to do my research, and if it's true, the world should know. Because this guy might be around one of, one of those little kids one day and mess around with him. And, you know, so I'm going to do it to actually save him from molesting a little child. That's why Pac attacked certain rappers and said they gay. Suge is the boss. You the boss of Death Row. Suge is the Don. You understand? But I'm the underboss. I'm the capo. That is my job. For the protection of all the Death Row, to do what's best for the all the Death Row. And Snoop, to do what's best for all the Death Row. My decisions wasn't based on I'm coming to Death Row, taking shit over. My decision was based on Dre not being there for Snoop doing his trial. Right. And this was all for real shit. Uh -huh. You understand? And, and that his, he wasn't producing shit. Other niggas was producing the beats, like on my album. Other niggas was doing the beats, and Dre was getting the credit. Uh -huh. And I got to go on MTV and be like, yeah, he did this, he did that. No, he ain't do it. He uh -huh. is a dope producer, but he ain't worked in years. And I got tired of that. I, I didn't think we needed that. I, didn't, I think we didn't need that. And he was owning the company, too, and he, and he chilling. He owning the company. He chilling in his house, sucking dick, eating pussy. I'm out here in the streets, you know what I mean? Whooping niggas' ass, starting wars and shit putting it down, dropping albums, doing my shit. And this nigga taking three years to do one song. I couldn't have that. But it was not my decision. It was Suge's decision. Suge the one that, that was coming to me because I was soft on it. Like, you know, well, fuck you. We just keep it in the dark. Yo, we, we back we back right here with Tupac, you know, just chopping up, chopping up a little bit. We uh, can't let you hear everything, you know, <laughs> some I'll stuff. Down, yeah, yeah, yeah. My man is definitely putting it down. One more thing about Death Row. Now, how does the, um, what's going on with Dre and how does that affect Death Row as a whole? You know, hold on. Dre's doing his own thing. It don't affect us. My uh, take on what happened was that Snoop was on trial for murder, fighting for his life. To, somebody had said that Dre was in the car. The, the jury believed that. We needed Dre to be there to say he wasn't there. Once they would have saw him, they would have known he wasn't there. And that would have saved Snoop's whole case. Because they would have saw that the, the witness that had said it was lying. And Dre never showed up. He was too busy. That's how they told me. When they told me that, I was like, well, no matter how dope he is, and Dre's one of my heroes in the music business, but I was like, no matter how dope he is, if you're not down for his homeboy, Snoop, who brought him back when he was just a relic, when niggas was dissing him, you know what I mean? Then I don't want to be a part of him. I don't want to be then I don't want to be a part of him. I don't want to be around him or nothing. Plus, I feel as though what's done in the dark will come to light. It's secrets that everybody's going to find out about that I don't have to play a hater dry snitch about. That will come out you'll find out for yourself and you'll know why I did it. I swear to God, y'all, I'm living by the rules of the game that y'all, the people, have put down for us to live by. That's real. Let's talk about it. The biggest battle Tupac waged was against his former friend and rapper Notorious B.I.G., all known as Biggie which added fuel to the East versus West Coast rivalry. I possess his soul, his and puppy. They know that I was the truest nigga involved with Biggie's success. I was the biggest help. I was the truest nigga. I don't write his rhymes, but he know how much he borrowed from me. He know how I used to stop my shows and let him touch the show. Let him blow up and do his whole show in the middle of my show. How I used to buy him shit and give him shit and never ask for it back. How I used to share. I used to share my experiences in the game and my lessons and my rules and my knowledge on the game with him. You know what I mean? He owed me more. He owed me more than to turn his head and act like he didn't know niggas was about to blow my fucking head off. He knew. And then, if that's cool, if he disappeared, be, be a fucking mouse. Be a mouse. If you are a mouse, be a mouse. But for me to know, like, three weeks ago this happened and then three weeks later your album's coming out and you are fucking done in your album. But you don't know who shot me in your fucking hometown? This nigga's from your neighborhood? And I gotta find out by myself, and I'm from, and I don't even call myself a dime, just a capo from the west side, and I'm on the east side in jail, and I know who touched me, and I know everything that happened. Uh -huh. That's power. And he didn't know, so he was faking. And I was mad about that. And then I'm out of jail, and I couldn't believe that everybody was treating Biggie like the biggest fucking star in the world. Right. I couldn't believe that people was buying into the player image, and I just wanted I wanted to bring back that reality. You know what I mean? Just like. I can't never, I can't never, nobody can't never be confused and think I'm fucking Mike Tyson and I'm a heavyweight champion. I'm a little nigga. That's why it's so raw to watch me just battle lions because I'm a little skinny nigga battling niggas three times my size. But Biggie is not a player. He's never been. He's never had bitches until he got some fucking money. That's a trick. That's not a player. It's not a popper. So my point was to prove him wrong. I took everything that he glamorized and I personified it.
when he first got released from jail, I, we had I had hopes for him. You know, we had a hopes for him that maybe he would get his life back on track. But I don't know what happened in the last year of his life, you know, to make him come to the conclusions that he drew. If I, I'm not the same guy that would come to the awards, have a problem with somebody, and whoop their ass in front of everybody. So now I got the radio, I see a problem, we quelch it, it's out, no big fires, just small little tiny sparks that could be put out. People were starting to say it's an East Coast, West Coast rivalry because it was people just trying to make money. It was true people trying to make careers, it was people trying to get famous. It was people hustling other people out of money mm -hmm. on the East Coast. You don't have no team, you need us. We from the East Coast, pay us X amount of dollars for protection. And some of these idiots was doing it. For us, how we looked at it is, we looked at it as we representing the West Coast, but we representing the ghetto. Tupac had a conversation with me, and he said, how do you feel I should be in the future? What you like to see from me? And if anything I told him, he would have followed it. Chain of command, that's how we was. I said, I want to see you have a record label. I just distribute it for you. You can have your own label, because I don't want you to be 35 years old, Pac rapping. He said, well, cool. The talent got to parlay into something, so that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm tired of sucking and jiving. This Machiavelli album is my proof of that. I didn't, I'm not predicting what it's going to sell. Um, I'm not predicting none of that, but I guarantee it's going to shake the world. You know, it, it was just as if he didn't really care anymore, and he bought into a lot of the stereotypes that the hip-hop community has embraced. It, it, it was just incredible to just listen to him. It was, it was the same time, it was frightening, it was funny, and it was also very sad, because that could have been any one of us. Had he been corrupt, has, was, it made you ask questions. Was he corrupted by his fame? You know, was he taking bad advice? Or when he threw in with Death Row, you know, was that like his own personal death wish? Tupac done the album. He called me and said, look, call my house right now. It's about three in the morning. <clears throat> I go over his house. I smoke my cigar. He's smoking the cigarettes. He said, look, I want the album cover to be me on the cross. Because I feel I've been cr being crucified. I'm here to be crucified like Jesus. He said, I'm not clowning the religion or nothing, but that's what I feel. Mm -hmm. And I told him, you know, as usual, I'll handle it for you. So I called Whiskey and he and our art department, and they done it. And Machiavelli, it's like, he feel better about that album then he do all eyes on me. He said, because you know, I'm speaking so real. I'm telling, I'm coming all the way from my gut to my heart, out through my mouth, telling the people how I feel. Then I got an album called One Nation. That's for everybody that's shooting darts at me, play hating, you know what I mean, behind this East Coast, West Coast shit. My plan was always to unify, you know what I mean? It was only to, it's like a military coup. When the CIA, they don't just go to the country and start you know what I mean? They got to get the niggas that run it out of right, it. Right, right, so right, that's right. what we doing. They, they gone now. Now we got One Nation with Greg Knights, Buckshot, Smith & Wesson, Smith & Wesson, Melly Mel, Scorpio, The Looney, Snoop, Corrupt, Daz, Me, Scarface, Cocaine, Bone Thug, Spice One, all of them on my shit. One Nation. And it's just about the hip-hop nation, all the real niggas that I recognize in the game. And it's hip-hop nation. And everybody's rapping like we one group. Right, right. And it's going to be more than one. The first one's coming out on my shit, Machiavelli. And the next, Duck Down, going to put it out on the East Coast. One Nation Volume 2.